Good morning to the English version of our radio program, Para Ser Legal, To Be Legal. So we start off the segment each time with important news that has happened in the, in the last week. Today we're going to talk about a Mexican woman that was initially refused entry into the United States to apply for asylum until a senator got involved and was then given the, opportun- the opportunity to actually request asylum. Um, second, we're going to talk about Trump's agreement with Guatemala for a third country agreement. And we're going to talk about Jaime Gámez Garcia, a 13-year-old that killed herself when her father was denied um, entry into the United States for the fourth time. Then we're going to talk about credible fear interview. So what is a credible fear interview? How to prepare for one? Why is it important? How does it function in the context of an asylum proceeding, which is the subject that we're really talking about today, where it's really all about asylum. And lastly, we're going to talk about a case of Arnav and Kiara, Indian citizens that presented themselves at the border of Mexico applying for asylum and what happened to them. Calificas para ser legal, quieres saber, solo llama al abogado Andrés Mejer. So, Mexican woman, 38 weeks pregnant, um, meets Senator Ron Wyden, who goes to visit the, the, the border. And he learns that she has a complicated pregnancy with called preeclampsia. Preeclampsia is where, in essence, um, the, body's bu- bu- the woman's blood pressure goes high, um, fighting off the pregnancy. And it could result in death to the mom, and it could result in death to the child. Why do I know something about it? Because my wife had it twice with both our children, and it's the reason why we couldn't have any more children, because of threat, uh, physical life threat to both mom and to baby, and each time got worse for us. So we're blessed. We have two children. One is 13 and one is 10, uh, Noemi and Marcelo. Now, so this woman had preeclampsia. 38 weeks pregnant, has a three-year-old son and her husband. She's not feeling well. She goes, presents herself at the border. Now, a Customs board, Border Patrol agent, uh, not seeing the senator who's, step, who's behind them. I don't know how you can miss a senator in the camera crews, but apparently he did. Uh, maybe not all that bright. But he tells the woman, we're full. You can't come here. She says, I'm a Mexican citizen and I'm afraid to go to my country and I have complicated pregnancy. I really need medical attention. That's when the senator comes up and says, hold on a second. Did you just tell this woman she, she can't come in? Yes, we told her that, 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 that we're full. Did she tell you she's a Mexican citizen? Yes. So there's a concept called metering that Trump has introduced, which only allows a certain number of people applying for asylum in any given day. That does not apply to Mexican citizens. Let me repeat that. Metering does not apply to Mexican citizens. Why? Well, think about it. If I'm a Mexican citizen and I'm coming to to the U.S. to claim asylum and I'm being told, no, you have to wait to file for, for asylum, that means you're putting me back in the location, environment, country and that I'm afraid to go back to. The law, you can't do that. The law doesn't allow that to happen. So Mexican citizens are exempt from this. If I'm from Guatemala, if I'm from Canada, if I'm from any other country, um, that is not the case. Well, actually, if I'm Canadian uh, and I'm at the northern border, I can't do that either. But if I'm Canadian and applying through Mexico, that's a different story. So she was allowed to, with the senator's involvement, that's uh, Senator Ron Wyden, a Democrat from Oregon, um, what, you know, allowed them, help them enter the U.S. Now, let's talk about a sadder scenario. Heidi Gamez Garcia, 13-year-old, same age as my daughter, killed herself last week. She was granted asylum in 2015, um, received her green card uh, in 2016, and she had been battling for depression ever since her, she was separated from her father. Her father was in the U.S. in 2014, um, had to go back to Honduras when his father was assassinated, uh, shot right in the car. Not even a year later, his mother died of diabetes. 
So he went back to Honduras and brought Heidi to the U.S. Now, it is unclear to me how Heidi was granted asylum, but father was not. But father was deported. He tried again. He was convicted of illegal reentry, given a 45-day jail sentence, and then deported. He tried a third time. And then he tried a... And he promised his daughter he would try again. After the last attempt, she took her life. She hung herself and her aunt found her in the closet. Immediately called an ambulance. She was determined brain dead, left on life support. And her father was finally allowed to come into the United States, given two weeks permission to come in and bury his daughter. Incredibly sad. I can only imagine... No, I didn't see any indication that father had an attorney until now. You know, after Heidi died. Now, I don't understand why he didn't have an attorney earlier. I don't understand how his asylum was denied initially. Because once you're ordered deported, you don't qualify for asylum. You only qualify for withholding of removal. It's essentially the same requirements, but the level of proof is much, much higher. There might be something in father's background that prevented him from uh, qualifying for asylum totally unclear what is clear is he didn't have an attorney then Heidi did Heidi won dad did not not right in any, any way shape or form um, and we, we may never know more information than that but it's a very fat, to me it was a very sad situation it touched me because it's well she's the same age as my daughter and I can't imagine being separate from my daughter for four years um, as much as she drives me crazy sometimes, well, most of the times, but four years, I, I, I don't know how people do it. Now, third news item of this week. Trump signed what they call a third country agreement with Guatemala. What is that? Well, there, there's a law under you know, the Immigration Naturalization Act that applies to the U.S.-Mexico border. It essentially says that any alien who enters or attempts to enter the United States across the southern border after failing to apply for protection in a third country outside the alien's country of citizenship, nationality, or last lawful habitual residence through which the alien transited in route to the United States is ineligible for asylum. Basically, it means is if you crossed through a safe country on your way to the United States and you didn't apply for asylum in that country, you're not eligible to apply for asylum in the U.S. So what the Trump, well, the U.S. has such an agreement with Canada. It's not really all that relevant, but let's say somebody goes from India or Pakistan uh, into Canada, lives there for a couple years, never claims asylum, then comes to the U.S. and applies for asylum. They'll say, no, you're not eligible to apply for asylum in the U.S. You lived in Canada. You must first apply there. So they're trying to apply that to Guatemala. I mean, Guatemala, give me a break. Really? Because that's a safe country? Uh, so they're trying to say just by having an agreement alone is sufficient. And so and Guatemala is allowing people to file for asylum in their country. Now, Trump administration tried to do that with Mexico, and Mexico has said no so far. They have not agreed to take in all of these immigrants and, uh, and then process them all for asylum. You know, Trump is saying that America is too full, but Mexico is not. It, it, it's a little absurd. We can handle much more immigrants than Mexico can at this point. But Guatemala is a failed state. There are thousands of immigrants coming from Guatemala every single month afraid to go back to their country. And now they're going to be told they should file for us. Well, obviously someone who's, Guatemala, someone who's from Guatemala uh, will be able to apply for asylum. Um, you can't tell the government that you're afraid of, that you're afraid of the government. You know, that, that's, not, that's not going to work. So, but any other immigrant that crosses through there is going to have that problem. So long story short, fly to Mexico first. That's a solution. You avoid Guatemala altogether. Go from your country to Mexico, and then Mexico, present yourself at the border. Um, that would avoid that problem. I don't know how realistic that is going to be, but that is, um, 
that is an opportunity to, uh, to avoid this scenario. Now, when you go to the border and you ask for asylum, that's when you're going to have a credible fear interview. And that's what we're going to talk next. So I'm Andres Mecher. Thank you for listening in to the English segment of our radio show, Para Ser Legal.